the metabolism of glucose is of central importance to all living organisms, and is, in fact, performed in almost every cell. As one of the major sources of energy in living systems, glucose is made and broken down constantly in living cells. The metabolic pathway for the breakdown of glucose is called glycolysis, from the Greek glucose for sweet or sugar, and lysine for loosening or breaking apart. Glycolysis is also sometimes called the emden meyerhoff pathway, after its discoverers. During glycolysis, the cell uses the energy available in glucose to produce a net of two ATP molecules and two NADH molecules. During the preparatory stage of glycolysis, energy is invested in the form of ATP to prepare glucose for utilization by the cell. This stage can further be divided into the energy investment stage, during which the ATP is used to phosphorylate glucose, and the lysis stage, during which the doubly phosphorylated glucose molecule is cleaved into two phosphorylated three carbon sugars. During the energy conserving stage, the two three carbon sugars are oxidized over several steps to two molecules of pyruvic acid. Through these reactions, two molecules of NAD are reduced to NADH, and four molecules of ATP are produced. Since phosphate groups are transferred directly from the metabolic products to ADP, this ATP generation is called substrate level phosphorylation. In contrast, in a process called oxidative phosphorylation, aerobic organisms use a proton gradient to drive the phosphorylation of ADP to ATP using free inorganic phosphate molecules. While glycolysis results in a net gain of available energy for the cell in the form of ATP and NADH, energy must first be invested to begin the process. This can only occur in a living cell with ATP available to invest. In the first step of glycolysis, a phosphate group is transferred from ATP to glucose. In the second step of glycolysis, the atoms of glucose 6-phosphate are rearranged to form fructose 6-phosphate. This rearrangement prepares the molecule for the third step of glycolysis in which further energy is invested in the form of ATP, forming fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. In the fourth step of glycolysis, fructose 1,6-bisphosphate is cleaved into two 3-carbon sugars, dihydroxyacetone phosphate and glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. This step is the lysis step for which glycolysis is named. In a very rapid reaction, dihydroxyacetone phosphate is converted to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. The favored product in the reaction is actually dihydroxyacetone phosphate, and the enzyme for this step catalyzes the conversion reaction in both directions. However, since the subsequent steps of glycolysis deplete the concentration of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate available in the cell, more dihydroxyacetone phosphate is available to be converted than glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, and the reaction is driven toward formation of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. In the sixth step of glycolysis, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is converted to 1,3-bisphosphoglyceric acid. Remember that each glucose molecule fed into the pathway results in the production of two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and therefore two molecules of each of the products from this step onward. The phosphate in this reaction does not come from ATP, but rather from a free inorganic phosphate in solution. During the oxidation of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, one NAD plus is reduced to NADH for each of the two 1,3-bisphosphoglyceric acid molecules formed. In the seventh step, the phosphate groups added in step 6 are used to phosphorylate ADP, converting 1,3-bisphosphoglyceric acid to 3-phosphoglyceric acid and producing one ATP molecule for each molecule of 1,3-bisphosphoglyceric acid. 
The net change of the molecule from the glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate at the beginning of step 6 to the 3-phosphoglyceric acid at the end of step 7 is the oxidation of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. This oxidation provides the driving force to form the NADH and ATP of steps 6 and 7. In step 8, the remaining phosphate groups are moved to the middle of each molecule, forming 2-phosphoglyceric acid. Each 2-phosphoglyceric acid molecule then loses a water molecule, forming phosphoenol pyruvic acid, or PEP. In the final step of glycolysis, each phosphoenol pyruvic acid molecule donates its phosphate group to an ADP molecule, forming an ATP molecule. These final two ATP molecules bring the net yield for glycolysis to two ATP molecules and two NADH molecules.